Amen. I'm going to be talking to you about the revelation of open heaven. We're going to run with the speed of the spirit. I sense that God want to do something. And he wants to speak to those of us who have the ears to hear the sound of the spirit of the Lord. Amen. We are seeing a consistent engagement in uh, the unfolding of God's will, layer by layer, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. There is a connect between what God is doing and the manifestation of this word in our lives. And that's what I'm going to be talking on today, the revelation of the open heaven. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. And I'm going to take the liberty to read from the Passion Translations. The Bible says, so it is impossible for God to lie. For we know that his promise and his vow will never change. Can I hear somebody say with me, it will never change. And now we have run into his heart. We have run into the heart of God to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. We run into the heart of God and we hide ourselves in the faithfulness of God. This is where we find his strength and comfort for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time. An unshakable hope. The infallibility of God and that means the fact that God is flawless and God is unmistakable. It's deeply embedded in God's creative power look at my eyes everybody this is why god cannot lie because his words is not descriptive his word is prescriptive what does that mean it means that when god speaks he's not describing what exists but his word becomes a creative power so god cannot lie it's not possible for god to lie if god says this red is blue and because God says it is blue, the creative power of God to cause it to become what God said goes automatically into work. It cannot lie. Only somebody who has no creative power can lie. If God says, let there be, there will be. You go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 in verse 3. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light and there was light. It's not possible for God to lie because God is not trying to describe what already existed. But he's trying to create what will be by the power of his creative word. Let there be becomes God's creative force that causes the earth to appear, causes the moon, the star, the sun to appear. And, and somebody is here today and you are wondering if maybe your life is falling out of alignment with a prophetic blueprint. And you are saying to yourself, maybe I miss God, maybe I miss my moment, maybe that which is are controlling my life. God says, listen, I'm not only trying to describe to you what I've written, but I am creating reality by the power of my spoken word and, and I'm saying that when I call you blessed blessings are automatically becomes a tangible experience for you okay I, I don't know if somebody understands that and, and so God establishes that move of his spirit that called those things that be not to appear so he call it the things that be not the things that do not exist. The things that has never happened in your history. The things that has never happened to anybody in your family. The level of impact, blessing, glory, miracles, signs and wonders. The things which only the mind of God has spoken. God calls the things that be not to appear because he has creative power. Creative power. So the prophetic is not to describe but to create. 
I don't know if somebody's here today. I want to ask God to create healing in bodies. When we begin to call you healed. Somebody said to me, Apostle, did you see it in the vision that I got healed? Man, it's not, I'm not describing something that I saw. As I'm speaking it, I'm telling healing to happen in your body. Looks like the Holy Ghost is over here. I'm going to go here. Because I want to take a minute to let this thing settle upon you. Because many of us are chasing God. Amen. To try to describe to us what will happen to us. But God says I'm not just describing to you. But I'm creating what I want from the will of my spirit. I can call you blessed. I can call you healed. I can call you delivered. And no devil in hell can hold you one second longer. I can call that everything in your life begins to align with my good. I'm talking to somebody. There is no witch in hell that can interrupt God. Because he's not describing stuff. But God is creating stuff by the power of his spirit. Come on somebody. He's creating it. He's creating it. He's creating it. And so the mystery of open heaven, he speaks about the line of communication that exists between heaven and earth. Because oftentimes when we're talking about the fact that God opens the heavens, he becomes quite elusive for a lot of believers who don't understand that everything that God would do is deeply embedded in the power of his word. When God opens the heaven, read through your Bible, everywhere what comes out of heaven is the word of God. Between the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is a gap called the 400 years of silence in which theologians agree that there was no particular prophetic word that left heaven to earth. So everything was not written. Malachi to Matthew, the end game of Malachi, there may have been some historical activities, but they have no inspired revelation because it was a silent period. And that's a season that you could call a closed heaven season. Before we got into that middle between the Old and the New Testament, would you permit me to take you back into the Old Testament and see how the open heaven factor was not in itself a permanent occurrence. Heaven's gate was not completely suspended, but it was a glimpse into revelation. People had only a glimpse into revelation. We've talked here about the portals and the realms, the gateway to God's supernatural, how to access God's presence through prophetic intercession, through the spirit of worship, how to intentionally walk through realms, and how to walk through, amen, the frequencies of the spirit of the Lord. But in the Old Testament, they did not have that liberty and that's what i'm telling you saints if the eyes of your understanding was not opened you will be stuck in the old testament while you have a new testament revelation because a lot a lot of believers are still dealing with god as though the heaven over them was still shut Elijah did not have a perpetual open heaven. Uh, Elisha did not have an, a perpetual open heaven. They only had momentary encounter with God. They would seek God for days, for weeks, for months, so that they could just have a little expression, a little access into God's realm. The Bible says one time Elisha wanted to prophesy, and the Holy Ghost was not on him. The Spirit of the Lord was not resident in them. Do you know that the rules of engagement has shifted between the Old Testament and the New Testament? Because now the Holy Spirit does not visit us, he lives in us. Am am I talking to somebody? He has come to take his place in us. But a lot of believers, uh, uh, Pastor Ronnie, they're still dealing with God as if he's still the God of the Old Testament who comes to visit them occasionally. You, you will hear believers sing songs like, Lord, Lord, visit us. Lord, we don't ask God to visit us. We ask God to manifest himself. 
because there's a difference between the omnipresence and the manifested presence. God does not come to visit us. God is with us. The Bible says, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God amongst us. Come on, somebody. And when Jesus was going, he made a promise of the Holy Ghost. He said, I go to the Father, but I will send you somebody that will come and live inside of you. And he is called the Holy Spirit. And every believer, we are carriers of the Holy Ghost is not momentary. The Holy Ghost doesn't come only on Sunday morning when you come to church. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you every day, every minute. You can call on God and tell God, I know you are here. I want you to manifest. I know I'm the temple of God. I'm the carrier of God. The glory of God is here. Manifest yourself. Manifest yourself. Come out of me. The, the Old Testament saints did not have that liberty. God will come only momentarily on them. Elisha could not move in the prophetic. And is one of those remarkable prophets. To the degree that when he wanted to prophesy to a king. He said get me a musician. So that the spirit of the Lord can come. When you read your Bible carefully. You will see that the Bible uses very temporary and momentary illustrations to describe how the Holy Spirit came on the Old Testament saints. See, and the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him. The Spirit of the Lord left him. The Spirit of the Lord came on him. The Spirit of the Lord departed from him. Because God is a holy God. And his holiness was too much to perpetually dwell in the Old Testament saints. None of them. Jesus said, out of them who are born of women... And he's speaking about the Old Testament. He said there was none greater than John the Baptist. He said but the least in the kingdom. The least believer in the New Testament is greater than John the Baptist. So what does that mean? It means we are not able in ourselves to approach God's place of glory. But we have a mediator in the person of Jesus. So in the New Testament, when God looks at you, he doesn't see you. He sees Jesus in you. Christ in us. The hope of glory. And so Jesus caused the portal between God and man to open. So men had a season of darkness and silence where there was no revelation. But then all of a sudden, the Bible says, an angel of the Lord went to a virgin girl by the name of Mary and gave the first prophetic word recorded before the one that came to Zechariah. But the one that came to Mary was the, was the deal breaker. When, when the angel came and said, Mary, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. For you will conceive and have a son. And the heavens open at that moment. And after that time, there has been a series of encounters where men have line of communication with God. So when heaven opens, what happens? Look at my eyes, everybody. What comes to you is the word of God. And we undermine the word of God. Because our spirit has not yet calibrated to the fact that everything that God will release in your life will come through the power of his word. God communicates money by his word. He communicates marriage by his word. He communicates ministry direction by his word. When you miss the word of God, you miss your destiny. When heaven opens, what comes is the word of God. I'm not talking about the Logos. I'm talking about the Rema. Because you could read the Bible and you don't get nothing out of it. Because somebody said to me, Apostle, you've been talking about the word of God and I've been reading the Bible. You don't change my life. It's like I'm just reading storybook. I'm reading Alice in Wonderland. Because the power of the word has not yet been revealed. The word of God must be backed up with two elements. Number one, truth and spirit. So we enter 
into dimensions of the workings of God by the understanding of open heaven that in the New Testament, the heavens are permanently open over every believer. Amen. The heaven opened on the day of Pentecost. How many of you know that the New Testament did not start when Jesus Christ uh, was born? The birth of the New Testament is the book of Acts of Apostles. Because until Jesus laid down his life right. as the testator of the New Testament, right. there was no validation of that testament. Yeah. Sins could not be forgiven. Amen. And the Holy Spirit could not be present anywhere that Jesus was not. Amen. Or anybody that he did not directly connect himself to. Amen. In person. In the Old Testament, which included parts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, Jesus had to directly pray for the disciples, breathe upon them, and then sustain them through the journey. And say, don't go to this place. Don't go to the Samaritans. Don't go to the Gentiles. Go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because the Old Testament was God's exclusive covenant with Israel. And so Jesus said, nobody outside of that peripheral can walk in the revelation except for one woman who came and asked Jesus to heal our daughter who was not Jewish. And, 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 and apart from one centurion, a Roman, just very exclusive cases that had to do with Jesus himself. Otherwise, the anointing was constrained. Because there was no breakthrough of open heaven. The New Testament began on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says, and there came from heaven a rush of mighty wind. And it changed everything. And that's why when people do church without the Holy Spirit, they might be in New Testament, but they are doing Old Testament church. Because in the Old Testament, all they did was to read the Torah. They read the law. The synagogues and the temples were full of rabbis that would come and read it. And that's what many churches in America is doing. They are describing God, but they are not experiencing God. Because the only way you can experience God is by the Holy Spirit. It's the dividing line between the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. The same God, but dimensions. Dimensions, realms of God. And that's why we tell people about the God of power, miracles, breakthrough, deliverance, signs and wonders. They can relate. And I don't understand it. They are indoctrinated. The greatest evil that ever happened to our world is the spirit of religion. Spirit of religion keep people bound to laws and rules. And they keep making those principles. And some people have even taken it to the next level where all they preach and teach is a soulish gospel. Amen. Feel it. Take it. Get it. There is no power. Until the new age spirit came and hijacked the hunger for God that was in the womb of people because the church had no answer. The pastors did not know nothing about the realm of God. They had no understanding about open heaven, about the spirit of God that came on the day of Pentecost like cloven tongues of fire. They don't understand what happens when power come upon people's lives. They don't know that there's a spirit of addiction and depression and that all these things manifested in people's lives. It's not just a feeling. It's a spirit. And only the Holy Ghost can check it out. Only the Holy Ghost can deliver our young people from depression. Only the Holy Ghost can break the power of generational curses. We need the Holy Ghost. I say we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Spirit of God.
Now I want you to hear me. The greatest evil you can do to yourself as a Christian is to be in a church that has no room for the Holy Spirit. Don't go there. It will kill you. I don't care how long your family has stayed in that church. You will never know what God could do with your life when the Holy Spirit is present. Don't go, don't go there and be like, for me, that's a deal breaker. I can be in an atmosphere where I do not sense the Holy Ghost. And many of you have been to places where they have great music, and they have great lighting and everything. And you just sit down there, you're like, oh my God, what's going on here? Why is it dry? Can somebody tell me? Why? Oh, come on, everybody's smiling. Everything is social. Amazing kids ministry. He's like, watch this. This is what God told me. He said, it's like having a great recipe great ingredient and you put it all in a pot and you put the pot on the stove but there is no fire so it begins to stink the spirit begins to stink people leave church and they go straight to commit suicide because the spirit of the lord is not praising The heavens open. Some of you are still waiting for the heaven to open. What do I do for the heaven to open? We make it look like there's something we got to do that God has not already done. What do I do? Apostle, tell me how many days do I have to fast for the heavens to open over me? Open heaven. But you were never under a closed heaven. The heavens already open. On the day of Pentecost. Amen. Your Amen. fasting could never have opened the heaven on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Jesus said just go wait. Because there is a time promised by the father. Amen. When he's going to tear that heaven open. Yeah. I, I, am I talking to somebody right now? He's going to tear it open. Tear it open. And tell every demon you cannot block this. Principalities and powers you cannot block it. I want to talk to my people. I want to live in them talk to them i want them to be temples of god carriers of god your sons and your daughters shall prophesy tear the heaven open tear it open tear it tear the heaven tear it open oh who am i talking to today some of you think oh oh i can talk to god I need, I, need, I need somebody with big title to talk to God for me. I don't think my sin will allow me access. He said, what are you talking about? Nobody has a monopoly of God's access. I've opened the heaven for you. I've torn it open. It doesn't matter. You can come to God. You can talk to God. And God wants to talk to you I can't feel God who told you God is a feeling oh, I gotta feel certain way I don't know oh when I pray to some level I start to feel some tingling who told you the tingling is the validation of God's presence we are two or three are gathered in my name if you will call upon me, I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which you have not seen. We don't move with God by feeling. We move by faith. I told you before, somebody said, Apostle, what if you pray for somebody and they are not healed? What will you do? I said, next. Because I know it wasn't me. It wasn't God. It got to be something going on with you. I don't know what it is. I don't have a minute to discover what it is. But if somebody was ready to receive, I always know that every time that prayer is prayed in faith, God will move. So how is it that somebody got blessed on the same line? Somebody didn't get blessed. God is no partial of persons. Heaven is open permanently on all believers. Heaven is open. It's not about to open. So we understand that we operate on an open heaven. It's our choice to receive from that open heaven. Because when the heaven opened, it's not just in vain. It wasn't like God just opened the heaven. 
every time that God causes the heaven to open is to download his word the word of God comes every time let me take you back to the Old Testament and I will still be in the synoptic gospel when the heavens were opened over Jesus what happened a voice came from heaven and said this is my son in whom I'm well pleased he connects us to his word A lot of people have not had that direct line of communication because there's distractions in between heaven and them. I'm going to give you a little illustration. Please look at my eyes, everybody. Kenneth Hagin, in one of his books, he gave an illustration of where he had an open heaven moment and Jesus was talking to him. And all of a sudden, a demon came and the spirit was just standing between him and Jesus. And he could not hear what God was saying to him. Jesus was speaking, but Kenneth Hagin did not hear. How is it that God can be talking to you, but you can't hear? That's what I'm asking somebody here today. Because you are waiting for the heaven to open, but God said, I already opened the heaven. And I'm saying things, but you cannot hear it. Because as I'm here today telling people that the heavens have opened, some of you are like, why can't I hear what God is saying, Apostle? I can't hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Why is it that things are not moving in my life if the heavens are open? Why can't I hear God send me blessings? The Bible says in the book of Malachi chapter 3, it said, try me in this. And say, if I will not open the heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there will be no room for you to, to receive it. So the question is, if God promised that, what's stopping it? Especially if I'm tithing. Because a lot of people are tidy and they're still struggling. So what's going on? So I'm going to take you back to that Ken Higgins story. He said, he said, Jesus was speaking to me. At first, I was hearing what he was saying. But then all of a sudden, his voice was getting more and more faint. And I could not hear him anymore. And this demon looked like a monkey, a monkey-like spirit. And it was dangling itself just between Kenneth Hagin and Jesus. And he was trying to talk to the Lord. Obviously, the Lord heard what he was saying. But the voice of God was becoming more and more faint to Kenneth Hagin. Yeah. And he said, Lord, I can't hear you. And he told the Lord, he said, God, chase this demon away. Lord, I can't hear you. Drive it away, Lord. And the Lord said, no, no, can it? It's not my assignment That's right. to drive the demon away. That's right. Because that demon is not in the realm of God. That's right. It's in your realm. And God has given you jurisdictional authority in this realm. That's why God did not say whatever you bind in heaven will be bound on earth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. You have no jurisdictional authority in heaven, but you have a remote control in, on earth. That whenever you initiate, you execute things in the earth realm, heaven execute. So there was a spirit there hovering. <laughs> hovering, eh? intercepting the line of communication between Jesus and Kenneth Hagin and, and at the time he now faced the demon That's right. isn't it funny saints please hear me hear me today that you could be fighting a battle Hallelujah. for years yes. something holding you yes. and you expect God to move it and God knew it was there. And God would do nothing. Amen. Because it violates heaven's protocol. For God to shift things that you permit. If you read that scriptures... From another translation, it said, whatever you permit on earth shall be permitted in heaven. 
whatever you disallow on earth now hear me again heaven has opened if you cannot hear God it's not God not trying to talk to you it's something blocking it see years ago when the Lord was going to teach me this principle I was flying the aircraft and it was very cloudy on the ground and there were clouds and shadows but the moment the plane took off and we hit certain altitude it was sunshine I began to wonder I said God how could we have had sunshine at certain levels but the ground is cloudy am I talking to somebody right now and that's what's going on with many believers in the earth realm the experience is cloudy depression everywhere just darkness but if they only elevated into the heavenly places the sun of righteousness is shining but there are layers of clouds that somebody need to tell the east wind to dispel the cloud so that the light coming from heaven can come to my spirit and I can hear the word of God and I'm telling you saying this is why I'm, the devil likes to make noise in your life many of you so much noise confusion you can't even get yourself he takes something so little, he magnifies it. All he wants to do is to drive you to chaos. And many of you are dealing with confusion. Husband fighting, wife, wife fighting, husband. And they fight so much that now they ask themselves, why, why are we fighting? <laughs> they can't even remember what started. <laughs> it was the devil. He just what? Because the devil knows that I, I could just throw y'all into confusion while I'm busy throwing my own information into your spirit. Because until the word of the Lord comes, everything is dry and empty. What I'm looking for is the word of the Lord. Listen, I, I'm telling you, people talk a lot around me. I hear so much. Voo, voo, voo. Non-stop. Internet. Boom, a parcel, a parcel, a parcel. This morning, somebody bombarded me with a load of, load of trash. On Instagram. Voo, 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 voo. And the devil, if you are not mature, you take those words, you're like, oh. That's the whole point. That's, the, that's all the devil want to do. Is the cloud. The fog. That distracts you from hearing God. When people talk. I'm like I don't care. I want to hear God. Where are you? I'm telling you. I'm, look, I'm going to the top of the mountain. When I climb higher. I see that there is still fog there. I go higher. When I climb higher. I say that there's still some noise. I still go higher. 